Okay, Mark. Thank you for the interview. Thank you to be here with uh, Italish. Uh, as you probably know, we are deeply involved in Irish culture, in uh, literature, in music, in uh, books, yeah. in movies too. And you are really an interesting situation to to put it on uh, on Italish because uh, you are a young author, but you already have under your belt uh, three movies yeah. and uh, a short movie. I'm really very curious also about it because it's uh, about Japan, more sure. or less. Oh, well, yeah. this, I've got about 30 shorts, but um, yeah. I haven't released they, some of them. Some of them are on YouTube. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why Japan? <laughs> oh, no, well, that was just um, a short 15 yeah. minute samurai film that I made, you know. Um, but I started off doing horrors. That was from college, you know, start off because a lot of students do horrors when they're, when they're in college for some reason, I don't know why. And I've done uh, just action scenes, martial arts scenes, fights, you know, different types of films, some with my friends, and then a gangster film called Dubs. That was like 30 minutes film. It's like a shortened version of Between the Canals. And um, yeah, so just developed that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because after that, it's uh, what, what you find of, of you on uh, Vimeo, for example, is that's about Japan. Then Dublin, Dublin, Dublin. Right. So it's quite, uh, quite yeah. strange. Okay. And uh, speaking about your movies. Yeah. Uh, Between the Canards. Yeah. King of uh, the Travelers, and then now Stalker. Uh, three different issues, three different approach to one city and two stories of this city of Dublin. Yeah. And definitely you are not the first, because if you go to James Joyce, for example, he has been probably the first to speak about Dublin in uh, a rough yeah. way, if you want. And somehow you have, uh, again, a quite a rough way to speak about Dublin. Uh, yeah. You had probably some issues with this approach. Yeah, you want to speak to us about that? Um, well, I'm not really just interested in Dublin stories, yeah. but they just seem to be something that just keep coming out, you yeah. know? Um, really, I kind of am interested in culture, yeah. you know? Um, politics is always connected to art, but I, I kind of consider myself a cultural filmmaker because whether it's in a story set in India or Australia or, you know, with Aborig Aboriginal people or... I'm interested in that, and I love watching Discovery Channel, you know, um, and, and uh, sign, you know, um, but with the King and the Travellers between the canals, they just are stories that just kind of came out um, naturally, and it was maybe just like, you know, there's a thing called a uh, bard, which is an old poet that um, used to tell stories about the past and um, and about. Uh, things that are connected to their own life story and I suppose that these stories were in me and just kind of needed to come out before I can tackle other types of scripts. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. You, have, you have worked with, uh, with Damien Dempsey in Between the Canals. Is, uh, how it's gone? With, da because with Damon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was brilliant to like, Damon is a, he's like a real bard now, you know, an Irish bard. Uh, he infuses his music with Irish culture, politics, you know, and they all just work their way into his songs. Um, but working with Damon was on Between the Canals, he's a natural performer, so I thought he'd be able to pull yeah. off the performance. And he has that intensity. He, he was natural. Huh? He was natural. Yeah, <laughs> like he'd never acted before. He was a little nervous when he came in. But, um, but he had the natural charisma and the intensity, and uh, I think he did a good job. You know, so I yeah. hope to work with him again. Yeah. <laughs> and soundtrack also from, uh, from Damien. So yeah. uh, there is a texture of Dublin music, of course, in this, uh, in this movie. And yeah. music, of course, is another issue, a very important issue for uh, Irish culture. Yeah. Well, growing up for me, I've always been mad about Irish cinema, you know, J Jim Sheridan, Neil Jordan, and uh, all, all the classic Irish films. But one thing I felt that they didn't have 
was Irish traditional music. Now, it has been used one or two tracks, or um, there's been you know bits of score used, but there's never been a complete uh, soundtrack of Irish traditional music. So that's what I wanted to do with Between the Canals because that's I'm really interested in that stuff and I, it's, I, it's, I'm passionate about it. So just the Dubliners, Clancy Brothers, you know. Um, who else is there? There's lots of uh, de demo, there's lots of, I'm trying to remember now, but there's a lot of, of uh, traditional Irish music, yeah. the soundtrack. And then with King of the Travellers again, instead of you know using foreign music or using uh, just score, um, I used uh, traditional uh, traveller music. So the musicians are the Furies, uh, Margaret Barry, who is a great um, traveller musician, uh, Pecker Dunn, you know. So it's all, it's 90% uh, real traveller music with some Johnny Cash thrown in there. Because <laughs> he has a connection to it, the It can be, so. it can be. Uh, it sounds, it sounds. It sounds, <laughs> really, really. And about Stalker? Stalker is the same again, but I used uh, some classical music because it's a different type of story, a new direction, and it's kind of experimental and it's it's a psychological horror. So I, I used um, classical music, but I also worked some Irish music in there because it's an Irish story again. So I like to use the music of where you're making the film. Like if I were, if I was to make a film in India, I'd like to use India music. You know, because that's what I'd be interested in. I'd love to go there and study the music and the culture and and, and infuse that into the into the film. You know, if I was to do a film abroad. Tell, tell us more about Stalker because uh, in Italy nobody knows nothing right now about Stalker because it's too new. Right. It's not yet on DVD, of course. So if you can tell us more about your last work. Well, Stalker is a, a very low-budget film that we, we did on a, a, through a funder campaign, but it's a psychological thriller um, set in Dublin about a homeless man who walks around the inner city, a place called Ranola, and he becomes friends with this young teenage boy called Tommy who's getting treated very badly by his family, his uncle, who's an upper-class criminal, a barber, and um, the uncle's name is Rudyard. And, uh, and he he kind of runs a gang, you know. And um, Tommy's also getting uh, his his mother is a drug addict, and uh, so Oliver recognizes um, something in this in this child, in this kid, this teenager, that like an innocence, you know, that was taken away from him when he was grown up. Because when he was grown up, he was treated very badly, and um, he had, it shows flashbacks to his childhood, and he was sent away to live with his uncle where he was abused. Um, so, without getting too deep into the uh, metaphysical side of it, it's, um, Oliver has a lot of psychological stuff going on and he has an imaginary friend called Roman, mm -hmm. which is a black priest and it's the manifestation for him of evil because he's grown up as a Catholic in Ireland and he represents, he, he thinks of uh, the church as something that has done bad in terms of sexual abuse because he was abused as a child. Um, so when his father, when he's a kid, his father shows him a statue of Saint San Martin de Paris, which is a saint, a black saint, and um, he tells him that this saint, this saint is going to look after him when he grows up. So when he gets older, he sees the, the, the manifestation of this little statue, which is Roman, the character of Roman. It's an issue that is uh, often in uh, Irish literature and movies. And we spoke uh, about this also with Cahar Black. Uh, the children are an important uh, uh, situation for Irish culture. If you want, it's uh, a matter of children in Joyce, it's a matter of children in Beckett, it's uh, in John Benville, because the Quirk series is about also abuses, child abuses from, uh, from Catholicism. Quirk, is it? Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. So uh, it's an important issue, and it's something with which uh, artists are trying to deal with. You speak about it. It's yeah. not something uh, that uh, it's uh, far uh, from your attention. You you Children. have the perception, yeah, Children. childhood yeah. and childhood, attention yeah. for them. It's uh, it's an important dream here in uh, in Ireland. 
yeah, they, it's very important, you know, and uh, it's, 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 I don't know, maybe, yeah, it has, it's worked its way into, into Stalker, I suppose, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of kids in Stalker, it's about the, the loss of innocence, you know. But also in between the canals, there are yeah. kids, bye bye, coming, Yeah, going, I didn't yeah. think of it before, but I suppose that's, that's true, like, um, it's important. Yeah. Uh, probably it's an attention to young people, because it, it's hope in the end. Yeah, hope, I and know. I suppose that's the future, you know, it's the future, so it's important. Yeah. Future of, of people, future of movies. You and the manifest about a new wave of Irish movies. Do you want to speak to us about it? Um, well, I think personally, now I don't, I don't want to say for certain because yeah. So you can't say for certain, but my personal opinion is that there's a, a new wave happening at the moment in Irish cinema. Um, there's a lot of filmmakers, direct, directors, yep. uh, producers, writers, and there's a lot of students that have come out of film school because there's some something really good is courses. happening. Yeah, something's happening. This is also the post recession. There's a, a lot of difficult times at the moment, and you know when there's difficult times yep. uh, politically or economically. Uh, some of the best films get made like in the 70s in America and uh, at the moment there is uh, many many Irish filmmakers and new films coming, getting released so I think it's really interesting you know what's going on. What do you think ab about, uh, it's a, another question that we had with uh, other uh, other writers uh, and directors like you uh, about uh, McDonough Brothers. Calvary is close to to be on screen. Uh, yeah. What do you think uh, about this situation in which uh, there is uh, one foot in uh, USA, one foot in uh, Ireland, for example? Because Seven Psychopaths, for example, is more American uh, than Irish. Yeah. But in Bruges was quite an Irish movie. Yeah. Uh, what What do you think about this uh, this way, for example? For you, the way till now is Dublin. I'm in Dublin. I'm working with Dublin stories. Yeah. If I were somewhere else, probably they should be stories from India, for example. And do you think that there could be with the new wave of Irish movies? Also a way to have Irish movies not, not set in Ireland, for example. I, 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 it's a good point. Um, I think it's very interesting because I think it's important for the new wave films to be international. Yeah. To have international teams in them, you know, um, and break out because if they're just in Ireland, people are not going to see them. But um, the thing about America is it's happened with a good few Irish filmmakers where they get a chance to make a film in America. And, uh, I don't know what happens in the process, but it's, it kind of gets damaged because I think a lot of the control gets taken away over there and you, ha and you have a committee approach. Um, I think a lot of Irish filmmakers that have started to make it, you know, there's, there's, Neil Jordan has done amazing, though, you know, but there has been uh, examples of Irish filmmakers who have gone to America and tried to do a film and it hasn't worked out the way they did some of their Irish films have worked because I think if you're going to make a, a fi film abroad you have to know the material 100% you have to know um, as much as the writer and you have to understand the culture and, and also you have to be involved in the process of the, the writing directing and then the editing you know because a lot of the the producers that fund these films in America in the editing stage they take it away from the director um, so I think that's a problem you know? And what do you think about, uh, for example, social networks opportunities? In the end, we, we are here because of LinkedIn, more or less. Uh, social networking gives opportunity also in uh, movie business to interact easier, to have uh, more people to speak with when you are, uh, you are on a project. Uh, what, what do you think about this aspect? I think Up it's very area. limited because uh, we had to self-distribute between the canals and then the Stalker. Mm -hmm. King of the Travellers got distributed, but um, in terms of it's good for dialogue, it's good for talking, and it's good for marketing, but I don't think this, it's, it's very limited because, um, you, you know, people with Facebook, I think only 25% of your, your people actually see the post when you put something up. So 
even if you have 5,000 uh, likes on your yeah. Facebook page, it's still very hard to, to market a film. Um, so it's good, but I think it's limited. Yeah. Unless you create some really, really interesting marketing campaign as a way for people to see film. You know? I, think, I do think social networking is, is limited. Unless you have a marketing budget, it's, it's down to having a marketing budget because uh, King of the Travelers had 30,000 and we had it up on social networking and we could pay Facebook to, to yep. get it out to their people, extra money. Yep. We had it up on buses and people heard about it with Stalker, it was self-distributed and all we could do was just Facebook it to friends and people didn't know about it, you know? And so, it's all down to money. <laughs> Ever, yeah, again. It is. Okay. And back to the New Wave Manifest. Uh, did you have feedback from your colleagues, from uh, people in the business about your ideas? Uh, is it happening something about your ideas? There's a lot of stuff happening. I didn't have any feedback personally from filmmakers I talked about, or, or to, but there has been a lot of stuff. There's, um, there's been a good few articles and uh, there's been a good few uh, students that have written theses mm -hmm. and you know. Um, and actually there's a group of students that are doing a documentary at the moment um, about the Irish New Wave so that they want to um, make that and send it out to festivals and stuff. You are teaching, you are teaching uh, right yeah. now more or less. I'm teaching, well, yeah. um, well I do yeah, that kind of the odd time, yeah. yeah. I've got a screenwriting course starting now on Thursday, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I do, I do a little, little bit of teaching. Tell us something about it. Tell us, what, tell you what's, about it. what's about uh, this course? Oh, it's going to be everything in the screenwriting process. It's going to cover everything. It's only a six-week course, uh, uh, one evening per week, but it's going to cover everything from idea creation right through to character, you know, flaw to, 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 to plot to synopsis to treatment, right through to formatting. You know, it's, it's just a, a course that's going to cover every aspect of screenwriting. Do you have many students? Uh, well, eight students. So I wanted to keep a small class because um, the focus. when you have too many you can't interact. I want to be able to engage with each student and ask them like what their plan is and just talk to them, you know. So I want a small class. What's happening there? What do you mean? What's happening? What's, uh, <laughs> what's going on with the class? With the class? Yeah. How do you mean? It's starting like... A, how do you mean? If, uh, what's the feedback? What's the, oh, it hasn't the mood? The... It hasn't started. Oh, okay. No, this, this Thursday is the first oh, okay. class. Okay. Yeah. So, so but that's I have, a preview then. I have it planned out though, you know, of what, but I'm also going to let it be a bit improvising, you know, okay. and let people talk or, you know, just let it go with the flow instead of being too structured and telling them this, this, instead of preaching, I just let it be interactive, you know, because that's the best way to learn, yeah, because that's creativity, you know, you can't uh, create something in a, a stunted environment. <laughs> let, let be free about, yeah. about creativity, for sure. And uh, we, we could finish with something about Italy. We were yeah. speaking before about uh, Italian movies. Yeah, and Italian you neorealism, because it's something that is very important to me. You know? yeah. I'm very interested in, in Italian films and the French New Wave and British New C uh, Cinema and the Iranian and the dogma. But the thing is, we've never had it in Ireland. This, we've never gone through this visual culture. But in Italy, you've, you've been through it, you know? Yeah. Um, We've got so many brilliant filmmakers and films that were so unconventional, but in Ireland... So the, there is a little beginning. bit of neorealism, Italian neorealism in uh, Between the Canals and... Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure about uh, Between the Canals or King of the Travellers. I think they're more cultural films that just came out, but um, definitely like I was watching Italian films back then when I wrote them, but I think Stalker is definitely more influenced by that, yeah. by, by your European cinema, European art cinema. And, because it's, it's in a different vein. You know, I said before that, um, you know, the Irish, uh, we got our stories and we got our cinema culture from books because we had a great lit literature, you know? So we took these stories from books and then we, we made a film that was based on American, how American cinema works, right? Mm -hmm. We never went through a whole explosion of cinema the way you did in, in, in Italy and the way they did in France. And, um, you are the writer of your films. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how it is the process of the writing? For writing. 
you are inspiration, so, so. Um, I think it will always, always start with a character. You always have to start, like for me now, you know, because once you get into, once you start with a plot, it's like a machine, you know, and you, you lose feeling. For me, it's all about character and emotion because that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in people and how they behave, you know, behavior. That's why I'm into, I like method actors like Brando and <coughs> Danny DeLewis and stuff, but um, for me, I start with idea and it kind of infuses with character and then from character, the story comes, and with story then comes the music, which works its way naturally in as you're writing. So that's what I'd be interested in most is character. But festival people. If you festival people. People. Festival. People. Fest no, just into people. But you know, if if you go to the center, to the to the theater, because uh, I grew up uh, going to the theater, because my mother loves the theater. You know, she. Um, but you notice actually in theater that it's just dialogue and character. Yep. It's not really, you know, it's really about dialogue and character, and um, for me, that's that's what what, what what great drama is, you know, yep. um, rather than plot. You know, this happens and this happens. I get bored by that, um, and I get I, it can be it can be great the first time, but when you rewatch it again, like I'm watching Breaking Bad at the moment, and it's amazing. It's a brilliant plot, classic plot, great, unbelievable. But um, you know, I tried watching a few more times and. You know what's going to happen because it's all based on plot, but a, but a character-driven piece, or that's why you know Scorsese would be one of my favorite filmmakers because he's he's not so plot-driven. He's more into character, and you can rewatch Goodfellas yeah. hundred yeah. times, and it's just amazing each time, you know. And uh, again, with uh, an Italian perspective, uh, what would you suggest of uh, Irish movies? Five movies, Irish movies that uh, Italy, Recom Italian people should see. To yeah, must, yeah. yeah, well, okay, <clears throat> five old ones uh, would be in the, your choice. in the Name of the Father, uh, Putin, Angela's Ashes, The Field, and uh, The Butcher Boy, and five new ones would be Jack and Ralph, Limp, Charlie Casanova, Out of Here, and Smalt. They're they're all new wave films in my opinion. You know, they're they're struggling to get released though. But hopefully they'll be released on VOD. But I think they're all groundbreaking. We check for them. Yeah. On uh, on Italish. Okay, Mark. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's, yeah, it's no been problem. great. It's uh, it's been great to have the opportunity to to speak about uh, movies about yeah, nice. your. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks. Bye.